All right, we're ready to move on to the next section. This section is called Dynamic Takedowns and Controls. When we're working on these, I'm, go I'm going to show you the way first to do them without a partner. You need to learn to practice that. Um, there are a lot of training aids out there. We've already talked about Bob over here. And as I said, that's not really his name. Bob stands for Body Opponent Bag. This guy over here. Adam. He, uh, he is a throwing dummy. We use him for, for throwing to the ground. So if you're doing dynamic takedowns, throws, this is a good thing to have. They're a little bit pricey, but if you're really into it, you're really training, and you can't get to a regular school, and you want to set up your own little training area at your house, in your garage, whatever, this kind of a thing right here would be awesome. So when we're going through these things, I'll show you first how to do it without a person, then we'll toss uh, Adam around here a little bit, and that'll give you an idea of what it looks like. And on these, remember, I mean, size really doesn't matter, the size of the person. So that's why I'm going to be demonstrating them on my dad. All right, so they're made to be used against a larger opponent, and they are very effective. Now, that doesn't mean all you big guys out there that are trying to learn how to defend your family and all that, that you can't use them. Of course you can. You just have to adjust yourself, make sure you get down into a low stance, develop good leg muscle and control so you can actually apply these techniques. Our first one is called the hip throw. Now on the hip throw, we're going to do a heel stomp as a follow-up. First off, right from the front part, we're going to be in our fighting stance. The guy is either in the front coming at us, whatever the thing is. Uh, <clears throat> the situation could be many, many different attack scenarios. What we're going to do is just take it from a regular punch coming in, okay, punching in here for your face, and we're going to utilize that outward block, then I'm going to grab his wrist, I'm going to step in and turn, lift and throw right over the top. That brings him down. Grab onto that hand. Bring the foot up and do your heel stomp right into that armpit. All right, so again, you're going to do the same way. I'm right here. Step out, block, grab. Reach around the waist, turn in. Lift over the top. Grab, heel stomp. All right, now I'm going to take it from another angle. Over here. Block, grab, reach around, get down low. Lift, bring him over. Grab that hand, pull up, same time that you do the heel stomp. Now the medical implications of that heel stomp are, when he's on the ground, you got, you got this arm up there, pulling up at the same time with both hands as you're stomping right through that armpit should pop the shoulder out. When we're stepping in again, remember we're doing that block, so we're just going to come up here and grab the dummy by the, by the sleeve or by the wrist. Step around, get into this position in front, over the top, right down to the ground. Right, then our follow-up, grab it here, heel stomp. Take it from a different angle. So we've got the hand, the wrist, the sleeve, whichever one. Step it in, reach around, get down low, over, bring him down, stomp in. All right, so that one is called hip throw. Now, one time from the opposite direction, right here. Step, block, Grab. Just reach around as you cross in with your right foot. Spin. You want your feet straight across. Pull. Get their weight up on top. Lift. Throw them down. Grab that hand. Stomp right to the armpit. All right, so our first one is called the hip throw with the heel stomp. Now, remember when we went on that? I had you starting here. We're doing the block out to the side, grabbing the wrist. You're going to step, spin as you bring your hand around, and lift over the top. Now, we're going to go through the steps of getting up to the throw several times so you can get the feeling for how to do that. All right, so we're going to be facing here. 
Now, when I'm, when I'm moving in for the attack, I'm going to take kind of a small step in. You know, we're in close, but I'm going to step forward and do my punch. So, she steps, does the block, grabs the wrist, steps in with her right foot, reaches around, gets into position, and she starts to pull, and I start coming right over the top. All right, so that's where we need to get. So I step in, block, grab, step, step, and right there, and I'm starting to go right over. So, throw the hips right into their thighs. That's where you want to take it. One more time, block, grab, step, step, and into position. So, now we're going to take it right up to the throat. All right, come this way a little bit so we have enough room. You want to see that landing. So I'm stepping in, she does that block, grab, step, step, gets into position, and over the top, oh, grabs the wrist, and follows right into that stomp. All right, make sure you have a good floor when you're practicing at home, all right? Don't, don't practice on your hardwood floors. Ah, thank you. Let's switch that one around. Now, the same idea, just going to just show you the step. So you get the step, step, and the position ready for the throw. So I'm stepping in, block, grab, steps in, one, two, right there. See the hip position, right at my thigh, ready, oh, let's go right over. And I come in, block, grab, steps in, has that position. If they have a belt, go ahead and grab the belt. Ready in here, okay? One more time like that. Follow through with this. Make sure you're getting your steps. Coming in, block, grab, step, step, and she's there. All right? Now we'll go all the way to the throw, taking me down to the ground. In we go. Block, moves in, and over the top. Blah, down I go, and stomp. Woo, right in the armpit. All right. So that's the hip throw. Now you notice when she's doing that, she's really sticking her hip over to the side. Remember when we were going through dry run, I said we needed to make that little table or shelf right here for the person to go over. So over the top of that. Right, and the other thing is, is the bending of the knees. I know he said that several times, but if you try to do it like this and the person's about your same height or taller, it's not gonna do a thing. So when you come in, you really have to squat down low and pull before you start doing the leg lift. That's what's gonna get them off the ground. So you lift, and rotate at the same time. Remember, legs are going to be stronger than your lower back as far as picking things up. That's that old thing, you know, you pick up with your legs, you got that person's body weight right on top of you, so you need to use your leg strength and not your lower back. Very important. Keep in mind what reaping is. All right, you see them out in the field in the old days. They had those long, curved um, pieces of wood with a handle on it, and down at the bottom was a big hooked blade. Reaping the wheat. So it's a follow-through action. So what I'm actually going to do with my leg is try to duplicate that reaping action. Come up, reap through. Now see there's opposite and equal reaction here, right? When the leg is going up and throwing, the upper body and the arm is going down to the floor. Bringing it up. Now, the way we apply this technique, say the person is uh, attacking and they may be coming in with two hands. So let's just say he's coming in with two hands shoved. So what we're going to do, move in, Blocking those two hands, grabbing the wrist, lunge right into them. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring my shoulder and drive it right into their shoulder as my hand goes to the other shoulder. So their head's right here in the middle, right? So we're right in there. Now I have that arm, I'm pretty much side by side with the person, 
come up with the leg reap throw. That takes them down. And we're going to do the same follow-up heel stomp into the armpit. So again, I'm here. Person is attacking. Both hands coming in, I block. Grab this one. Lunge myself forward into him, smashing into his body. Up, reap down, get position, stomp. All right, from the side angle, he's moving in. We block, grab, lunge into him. Up with the leg, reap throw, step in, stomp. All right, one more time. They're coming in, and we block it, grab, lunge into that hip. Up, reap, position the hands, stomp in. All right, let's try this angle here. So we're coming into it. Block, grab, lunge in, leg up high, reap through, position yourself, stomp. As we're stepping in on this one, getting the wrist. Coming up here, getting a hold of the collar or just grabbing the shoulder. We're going to come up with the leg, reap, take him down, stomp right into that armpit. All right, again, we're into the position, we're lunging up right next to him. Of course, it doesn't look exactly right because he's got these big old stubby arms sticking out in front of him here, but you're getting the idea how to use a training dummy. Coming up with that, reap, take him down, stomp right in there. Turn around, right here, he's coming in, block, grab, lunge in there, throw yourself in, come up, reap throw, step, and stomp. All right, that's called the outward reap. Now, when we went through this one dry run, I really tried to emphasize the idea of what a reap is, that action of the foot, that it's up high, reaping through. You need that follow through with the leg in order to make this thing really work. We're gonna do the same thing that we did uh, before. We're gonna go right up to the throw, right up to the point of the throw, so you get the idea how to position yourself for this technique. Now, I'm quite a bit bigger. So she's going to need to adjust a little bit. We'll show you some of that adjustment when we do this. On this one, when I attack, I'm going to be stepping in with a two-hand grab. I can either be choking, pushing, it really doesn't matter, trying to grab their shirt or jacket. As I do that, double hand block, remember? So I'm coming in. Block, that protects her, grabs the wrist. Now she's going to do a shuffle stance in order to get in close enough. So she slides up, comes in, hits my shoulders, lifts that leg up looks down at the legs, reaps right between, and just put it to the contact point, and then right there, ready to throw me down. All right, there we go again. So I'm stepping in, two hand attack, and block, grab, shuffle, hit, and ready at reaping. See how she got that knee up high before coming through? You need that momentum. Going in, block, grab, shuffle, strike. Right here, I'm pulling down on the wrist. I'm not going to let him stand back up after I hit him. So after I hit him, I'm going to keep holding down so that when I come here, he's going to go straight down. All right. Now, all the way to the takedown. Leg. She should be taking that leg out, just knocking it out from underneath me. Stepping in. Choke. Smack. Reap. Down I go. Stomp. Cool. All right. And switch it over. Now again, we'll go right up to the point of the throw so you can see it from a different angle. Step it in with that two-hand attack. Grab, lunge in, boom! Leg comes up high, right through. See where she's taking that leg? Right through there at my knee level. If I continued on, my foot would go right to the ceiling. All right, and that's the thought you have in your mind. You're going to put a footprint on the ceiling. I'm stepping in. Reaping in, all right. There we go. Do the whole throw. And I'm moving in. Ooh. All right. One more time. Coming in. Block, grab, lunge. Reap 
Good leg. Down. Stomp right into that armpit. Remember, when you're doing the stomp to the armpit, you've got to hold, you got a firm death grip on that hand. When you're coming down, you're pulling up. You want to get that arm to pop out of shoulder joint. All right, that's the outward reap. Practice it over and over and over. is called neck twist takedown. And what this does, this has a, a nerve pinch. We're going to do close-ups on, uh, on when we're doing it with a person so you can see exactly where to put all of this. For now, just practicing the steps. Make sure you get all the steps right. All right, on this one, we're in a fighting position. Person is stepping in with a driving straight punch right for the face. So we're going to step out with the outward block. Grab the wrist. Come across here, hitting with the palm heel, right on the side of the neck. Let the hand wrap around the neck. Use your two middle fingers to reach around to the far side of the neck. And there's a nerve area right in there, so we're gonna pinch that. Step across with the right foot, spin back with the left, twist, and tweak that neck around with your wrist. That brings them down to the ground. From there, we're going to wrap them up with the arm, and we'll go through that in a lot more detail when we have a person that we're, deal that we're training with here. But step by step, step out, block, grab, strike, fingers into that neck, right foot across, left foot back, turn, take down, Move in and wrap them up. Okay, one more from the angle, or a couple from the angle here. So they're punching. Block, grab, strike, fingers, right foot, left foot, dig down. Wrap that arm around them. All right, this angle. Block, grab, strike, fingers into position, right there. Right, step left, spin. Wrap them in. Neck twist takedown is utilizing a nerve pinch. If you look at the back of the neck, the, there's these two uh, muscles that go right up alongside of the spine. Now we call those rope muscles because they, they kind of wrap around like a rope. What we're trying to do is get the fingers, the two middle fingers again, strong fingers, on the other side of that rope. You feel right there, there's a little flat spot. So as soon as you get that position and your fingers are in there, you, you'll feel the, knee, the nerve pinch going on right there. So trying to get that hand position. All right, step by step, just before the throw. So the important part here, she's gonna be stepping and blocking. So remember, I'm doing a straight thrust punch. She's stepping out and blocking. The so block, grab, strike. Step, step, right there. All right, I think we're ready. She's going to throw me to the ground. All right, here we go. And block, grab, strike, step, and one, two, whoop, down to the ground. Now look how she followed. You see that? She's got her shin right in here. I talked about that when we did dry run. Got that hand. Now she wraps my arm, brings it over the top. She tries to gag me so I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Get that hand right over the top. Push it there. wrapped his arm underneath his neck. And now I'm going to push, put pressure on his head to make it more hard for him to breathe. All right, so you can do two things with that. You can wrap that arm right around the throat, pull, pressure down. You can wrap it right around the mouth and nose. If it's bare arm, then that makes a pretty airtight seal. You wrap that right around the mouth and the nose and pull it really tight and they can't breathe. So it's not choking them, it's suffocating them. All right. Can we do that to really bad? Yeah. Here we go. So we're stepping in. Block, grab, strike, grab, and one, two, down. Oh, wrap that arm. 
So I'm pulling the arm across his mouth so he can't talk anymore. I'm going to push on the head and pull up on the arm. And again, I've got my shin right into the ribs. All right. When you're practicing with your partner and you're doing these type of uh, controlling techniques, when you get that locked in, partner on the ground, if you're feeling pressure, I mean, if they're really pulling on the arm and pushing on the head, you're going to feel a lot of pressure across your neck. And you're going to start feeling your air getting cut off. Slap the ground, slap their arm, slap something, and that tells them it's time to release. All right, so you got to practice well with each other. If you take it too far, you hurt your partner, you don't have anybody to practice with. <laughs> also, you just hurt somebody. So, wrap it, get it in there, get that good control. When you feel it, slap, let them know. All right, we're going to switch sides. So again, watch from this angle. Okay. Yep. Step, block, grab, hit, step, step, down. Oh, follow me down. Get your right hand out, pull and push. Okay. And so person who's doing the technique, you're going to let go right away when they slap. Twist, take them. Now, <clears throat> the, the hand position, we got to kind of go over that a little bit. When you've done the block and the wrist grab and they're going down, don't release and re grab to wrap it. What you have to do is direct it, but let your hand, see how I'm doing that? Let it spin so you can bring it around. So it's just a, you're keeping your grip. But you're just doing it enough so you can spin your arm around there. So don't release and re-grab. Bad move. the roundhouse kick takedown. Uh, in confrontational things, uh, confrontational situations, people come up with roundhouse kicks quite often. It's a fairly difficult kick to learn, but once they get it, they like it, and so they use it a lot. So in fighting situations, you see a lot of roundhouse kicks of various types coming into the bottom, like our rib kick, regular full-on pivot roundhouse kicks, where you're coming into the kick, so we're dealing with that type of thing right there. Now, for practice purposes, we're going to say they're kicking into your rib area. So we're going to be in our fighting position. The kick is coming in. We're going to take a step out and do our downward block. Remember that one. From the block, the hand comes around over the top of the leg. Shoot across for the throat. We're going to just lock right in on that throat. Step behind their standing leg, because we have one leg up here. Pivot, take them down to the ground. They're falling down right there. We've got a hold of their foot. And we'll show you the exact foot grab position when we have a person here. And heel stomp right into the groin. <clears throat> here we go. Standing here. We do our block, hook, right to the throat. Step, pivot, throw them down. Take a hold of that foot, lock it into place here, stomp to the groin. Roundhouse kick into the ribs. So it comes around and we do the block, hook and grab, straight to the throat, step in, pivot, throw them down, get a hold of that foot, stomp. This angle, kick is coming in, block, grab, straight in, step, pivot, take down. Get a hold of that foot, pull, pull up into the heel stomp to the groin. That's the roundhouse kick takedown with the counter. This can be used against uh, like the rib kick, regular roundhouse kicks like I showed you earlier, any kind of a kick coming around and into the body. 
We're taking this particular application right here from a kick aimed for your body. So anywhere around here, you know, your, your hip area, uh, the, your side, your kidney, your ribs, up into here. So that kick coming up into the body. All right, so here we go. She's in position. When I do the kick, remember, you want to nullify it as much as you can. So she's going to take that step to the side again, right at the time she does the block. So kick comes up and step block, grab. Shoots in that hand right for the throat. Steps behind my foot, pivot, and down. Right down to the ground. Now here's that foot position lock I was telling you about. Look at that. Right hand is on the instep. Left hand is back, hooking the heel. Holding on tight and ready to pull, she gets in and stomp right in for the groin. Okay. There we go again. And step, block, grab, shoot for the throat, step behind, head down to the ground, get the foot and stomp. All right. And we'll do that from the other side. This is so much fun getting beat up by my daughter. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I bet she is. <laughs> All right, so remember the step. Here it comes. So block, grab, shoot that hand. Step, whoa, down to the ground. And oh, right into that heel step. Block, shoot, step, down I go. Hook it. Oh. All right, very good. Again, that's called the roundhouse kick takedown. section, effective wrist locks and arm bars. Remember when we were talking about it, uh, when you're going dry run, I kept you know referring to all these things on my own body. Well now, having my daughter here, she'll be able to show you that. The grabs, these are so important, you gotta get your hand in the right place immediately. So that is one of the things you need to practice over and over and over and over and over, is how to get your hand right where you want it. called the long arm bar. Now when we're doing a long arm bar, we're working on getting their arm to be uh, in an elongated position, long arm bar, with the wrist bent so they're still getting that wrist torque and bringing them down into a controlling position. So in order to get them there is what we're doing. We're going to practice this from a two hand choke or two hand grab. Hands are up here, we come across, reach all the way over and grab their right hand, the far hand. You're going to grab that. When you grab it, you want to take your thumb, put it between their thumb and first finger in the webbing, we call it, right there. Stick your thumb right in there. Reach all the way over across the back of their hand and get your fingers over their knife edge and all the way in, as far into the palm of the hand as you can get them. That's the way we're going to grab. So it's locked in like this. Other hand comes right up under the elbow. Bring it up sharply, because if you can pop that elbow and, and hyperextend it, you're already on your way to, to putting some pain on the guy. From there, bring the arm down and across. Stop your hand right over here on your belt. Put it on your hip. Pushing down with this one. All right. Now, we're going to uh, use that as a controlling mechanism, and then we're going to actually come in with a, a follow-up. So we do a knee strike coming right up into the ribs, or if they're in a, in a turned position, you can bring it right up into the face. So again, we're here in this position. They're coming in, they're choking. Reach over, grab. Hand under the elbow. Bring it down right into here. Come up with a knee strike, doesn't matter which one. Right knee, left knee. Put it in there. The only thing that really matters is that you're getting a good crunching knee blow going in. Ribs are really exposed at this point because the arm is totally bent here, right into the ribs. Okay, I'm going to do it on the other side so you can see that. Reach over and grab elbow, bring it down right into that hip area on your belt, and then up with the knee strike. Okay, one, two, whatever it takes. Put those knees in there. Okay, we'll take it from an angle from here. They're coming in with a choke. Reach over, under the elbow, bring it down. Come in with a knee strike. That's our finishing blow. From the rear, grab, elbow, 
down in here, turn me. One more time on the other side. Remember, we're going to go left hand over, hit that elbow, bring it down, knee strike, one or the other. Remember when I was showing you that? I was saying cross over the top, grab the hand. We'll show you that grab here in just a minute. This comes right underneath the elbow. We're going to take him down, get that control factor, and then whichever knee is available, bring that knee up, either into the ribs or up into the face. So, <clears throat> facing each other. I step in. Here's the grab. Right hand is going to come all the way over and grab. Now, look at that position. Thumb is right in the webbing. The fingers are reaching all the way around into the palm of my hand as far as she can make it go. So she has that grab, brings the other hand right up underneath my elbow, trying to hyperextend it a little bit. Now, she's going to bring it down into a controlling position. It comes across and down, right into there, right on her hip. Now, whichever knee is available, she comes up right into the ribs. All right. <clears throat> when you're practicing this, practice the grab, as I said many, many times. We're going to go through a few, just the grab, just to make sure. So I'm stepping in, reach over, grab. Again. Reach over, grab. One more time. Grab, elbow, continue. And down I go, in with the knee strike. All right, let's switch sides. <clears throat> Once again, just the grab, reaching over, under the elbow. She's got that position. Over. So you're going for the opposite hand. Now, all the way up to that takedown. Ooh. All right, good. Again. Now, let's do it with the left knee this time, more for the, for the face. Man, coming right up and in. So you can adjust any way you need to, to hit with either knee, any of the targets that are available. All right, we're gonna do one straight on this way. So I'm attacking, so you watch her angle and how she turns and adjusts. Reach all the way over, elbow, pivot. So I'm pushing toward him with his hand this way, I'm also turning this way, pushing down on the elbow, and I'm going to do the knee to the face. So I'm set up for that. Again. Over the top, elbow, pivot, and knee. All right, and let's switch it around. You see it from the other angle here. So I'm going to attack. Pivot. I think we covered that one. Again, over and over and over. Get this thing down. This is the inside grab wrist lock. Now the difference, on uh, the first one, we're crossing over the top. So that would be the, the crossover grab. Inside grab, if they're choking us, means we're taking the hand closest to us on the inside of the grabbing mechanism here. So coming up, grabbing here, peeling that hand right off. Bring your other hand over the top. Now we're going to start pushing down. As we start pushing down, then the person starts to drop. Right there, turn it into a cross thumb uh, wrist lock position. This will hold them on the ground. Cross thumbs. Your fingers, all of your fingers, are right in the palm of the hand. Twisting and pushing down to the ground. Now, as I said, when we have uh, two people out here in just a little while, you'll be able to see how all these things are going to work with a person. We're just trying to get the idea of what you're going to do stepwise. Let's do it on the other side. Left hand grabs the hand closest to it. We're going to take it off and twist. Twist with your body. That's how you get it off of there. Bring your hand up on top like this, pushing down. As he starts to go down, rotate into that cross thumbs, wrist lock position. There on the ground, you've got control. You can either hold them there. We can do more heel stomps. You have all kinds of options at that point. 
So again, left hand grab. Peel that off of there, twisting your body. Bring your hand up, push, and into the lock. We're doing the other side, right hand comes up. You want to peel that off of there. Bring your hand up, push and rotate right into that lock. Inside grab, wrist lock. Uh, we talked about that hand position as well. I kept showing you on my own hand how you're reaching over the, the base of the thumb and getting your thumb way over between the last two knuckles. Okay, now you're going to get to see that here. As I attack, reaches over, grabs that hand. See, it's a, the same side hand. Left hand is grabbing the hand closest to it. Now she's going to step a little bit out and peel it right off using her body. Bring the palm of her hand right against the back of my hand. That's going to cause some pain right there. Start pushing, rotate into that cross thumbs position, and down I go. Now, she's going to hold that arm nice and straight, lock it in. See how those thumbs are positioned to push down and get more pressure. Now look at all the follow-up she's got. Nice heel stomp coming into the armpit, chest, face. You got all sorts of targets right there. Go on in. Get the grab. Ah, starts to push, goes into the lock, holds it, and she's ready for that follow up. Let's switch sides. And I'm going into that choke. I grab the peel, keeping it close to my body, and push, cross thumbs, and I can follow up. So, see this? This is what we're talking about crossing the thumbs. Pulling up on the arm, on the straight. Try to get that arm nice and straight. There we go. And right in. Good. Let's do the two angles here too, just to make sure. So watch her, her body angle, how she turns. She's going to grab when she does the, does the initial ripping it off, a little step and body twist just to make sure she's got the energy, the power. Then she comes up with the hand and down we go. Locks it in and stomp. Good. Now remember that stomp is an optional. You may only want to control the person. Switch it around. Step it in. inside grab wrist lock. Now remember we're calling it inside grab because you're grabbing the hand closest or inside for your grip. This hand. Left hand grabs the hand that's on the left side of the neck. Right hand would come over and grab this. Let's do one with the right hand just so you can get the idea. So if she's in a neutral position this time, I step in. She brings up the right hand and grab. Again, step out and turn the body and snap it right off. Comes up with that other hand, palm position first, starts to push me down, and then turns it into that lock, holds it tight, and is ready for a counter, a counter move or just a control. Now, if she's going to hold me here, she'll probably turn and push way forward like that. Now they got the wrist really into a locked and compromised position. Okay. Again, that's the inside grab wrist lock. This next one's a little bit more precarious. There's more to it. It's called a step through spinning arm lock. All right, so we got some real Hollywood stuff going on here. Person is stepping in, they're either doing a straight punch, you might even have a knife coming in with a stabbing movement. Uh, anything that's coming straight in at you like that is, is a good application for this. So we're going to utilize a rising block. Now when we do it, they're lunging into us, they're coming in. So we need to get in there and block. In this particular case, we're going to block with the back hand. Right, I've got my right foot back, so I'm blocking with my right hand. Comes in, block, over the top, pushing it down. Right there, my hand is sliding down and getting right on the back of the hand 
Okay, don't grab the wrist, slide down to the hand so you can bend the wrist. All right, so that's coming down here. Now I'm gonna join in with my left hand. Now I've got all my fingers again in the palm of the hand and the webbing of both hands are locked together right over the back of the wrist. Bring it up as I step in with my right foot over the top of my head, turn, bring it back. Now at this point, we need to get control of them. So we step in, let go with the right hand, maintain control with the left, bring it behind them, reach around, grab them by the throat, pull them back in for a control. Notice the webbing of my hand is right across the back of the wrist. My other hand comes right in and joins it. Now I'm going to do the step. Step over the top. At this point, I'm going to let my left hand take over. You see where the fingers are? The thumb. Again, the webbing right on the back of the wrist. This gives you a lot of torque that you can put across their wrist for either that come along or for the lock. So remember, get your fingers in the palm of the hand. Comes in, we block, over the top, pushing down, join it in with the other hand as you step forward, over your head, turn, bring it in, go for the control, let go of the right hand, keep it in there with the left, grab the throat, pull them to you, angle, block, over that arm, bring it down. Step in as the other hand comes into play. Over the top, bring it in. Reach across, get them by the throat, pull them right in. Facing this way. We do the block. Over, down, step through, over the top, in, grab, and bring them in. Step through spinning arm lock. So out of all of those that we've covered, we did the crossover long arm bar. We did the inside grab, pulling it out, turning that into a cross thumbs wrist lock. And we did the step through spinning arm lock, the block, step through spin, right up into the arm lock. Now, the next thing, this is called a step through spinning arm lock. A lot of words. <laughs> uh, it, when you learn it though, it happens really fast. It's a very quick technique. Now, instead of using a choking or grabbing technique, I'm going to go ahead and take this one from a punch. So, she's going to be expecting that punch, so she's in a good fighting position here. So when I come in with a punch, she's going to um, block with the back hand. Remember I told you when you were first practicing your blocks, punches and everything, that you can block with the front hand or the back hand. It really doesn't matter. It depends on the situation. Well, this particular situation is calling for the back hand block. So, notice she's got a right foot back. I'm stepping in. She's going to block with the right hand. She does an open hand because she's going to go in for that wrist grab. Brings it down. Now, right here, I kept telling you guys about the web of your hand going across the back of the wrist. She does the step through, brings it over the top. Now look at that wrist turn. See how she's really putting pressure on that. Brings it right down and back, right behind me. Holds it tight with that left hand. Comes up with the right hand. Reaches around and brings me right to her shoulder. All right. We'll do one more from this side. We'll switch it around so you can see all the pain and anguish on my face. <laughs> all right, coming in. The lock. Around, under, up, grab. All right. Stepping in. Over and control with that left hand. Reach, grab. All right. And then she pushes me away like I am a bad guy. <laughs> All right. Stepping in with a punch, bad guy. Remember when you're moving in. Step in, block. Bring it down. Over. In, reach, and there she's got me. All right, one more time, and we're going to talk about the ending hand position. Right 
there. She's got a good locked in position. Brings it back. Right in behind me. Now watch. She comes up with that hand. Look at those fingers. Where's up? Right up underneath the jaw. You're reaching for the tonsils. Peel it back right into there. You got that control factor. All right. It doesn't take a lot once you get into the, the throat area, and especially up under the jaw, right in there, to control somebody. Uh, you'll feel it. I mean, if they actually still have their tonsils and you get your hand up in there, you'll, you'll feel those little buggers. <laughs> All right. So that is the step through spinning arm uh, lock. Let's take it from a different angle, just to make sure. I want you guys to get this down. Sometimes following this way, if you're facing us right now with the TV, you'll be able to follow this. So watch this angle. I'm coming in with a punch and the block. See how effective that is. Over the top, down, step through, under, reach, and there we go. Okay, we'll go over here. And I'm actually, when he comes in to punch, as I come down, I'm using a bottleneck. So I'm sliding my hand to his wrist so that I can rotate around, join with the other hand, continue through, upward pressure here, and control. All right, very good. So that is the step through spinning arm lock. on the effective wrist lock and arm bars. We cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you just practice these things over and over and over in order to get them, you know, without thought. You should be able to just react and go right into that move. All of these things are incredibly effective. Now, we mentioned before that there's many different ways that you can use a technique like that. i tell you what, we've got that step through spinning arm lock. Instead of a straight punch, let's say I've got a knife sticking out of my hand right here. And I'm just going to kind of try to come in, I'm going to try to stab her. She needs to lunge in so she blocks past the blade. That's a really important thing. So when I'm coming in and I'm going to stab her, she's in. Then she comes up, now look how she does the grab. Right over the top. So the blade is still here, it's still hanging free. Comes down, turn, now right about here, she really cranks on that wrist. Whoa, probably let go of the knife. And then it comes back. And she's still got the same follow-up and the whole thing. I'm going to show you a little different. We're going to switch sides. We're going to do that. As soon as she gets me into that controlling factor, she's going to decide she needs to do a little bit more. So we're just going to do an arch kick to the back of the knee, which is going to put me down on the ground. And then we're going to follow up with something that you already learned on a different technique. So she's going to have that head already there. She's going to lay it down. Remember the follow-up that we used on the other arch kick technique. So I've got the knife, I'm stepping in with this. We're gonna do a little bit of an adapted technique for you so you can see what we're talking about when we say supplemental DVDs coming up later. Stepping in, and there's the block. She comes in for the grab, running it down, bringing it over, locking it in. Goes right up for that throat grab. Ah, oh, now she's gonna go in for that arch kick and just drive me down to the ground. So down I go. She holds that, now she can release the arm, reach up, and smash. So we're taking one of the elements of a different technique and combining it with that one. That's part of adapting. That's one of the reasons that we have so many of these um, combination techniques, because it's, you're never gonna use one entire combination, probably. I mean, yeah, you could. They're, they're that effective, they could work that way. But you could start one and then finish off with a different one. Uh, like on the uh, wrist lock, we were only going to go to the locking position of the wrist. But it's obvious, right there is a good target. You do your heel stomp into the armpit or the, the head or the throat, depending on how bad the person is, if they're really trying to kill you. Um, and that's the thing you've got to be careful of. When you are defending yourself against an attacker, you have a right to defend yourself. But there is certain things in the law 
you know, that say, are you using an equal amount of force, you know, to counter what they're doing? If you're using something greater, then the, the law could actually pull something against you there. So make sure if they're barehanded, you're barehanded. If they're coming at you with a knife, you can go ahead and bust something. All right, so don't worry about that. They're trying to kill you. You can go ahead and use your techniques in there. All right, so that is the last part there, the effective wrist locks and arm bars. All right, one more time. All right, that's just a preview of some of the things that you would get on your supplemental. You learn it one way, and then we're going to show you in those supplemental DVDs how to apply it in a multiple attack scenario. I could be attacking differently, I could be trying to grab her, I could even do this, said, I could come in with two hands, I'm going to choke her, and just choke. You can still do the block, and look, right between the two hands, she comes up, wow, with that good solid tiger claw. So it's, it's effective against multiple attacking scenarios. All of the techniques that you learn it can be done from various attacks. We're teaching you the basic learning method in this first DVD. You order the supplemental DVDs later, and you'll find out how to do it from the front, from the side, from a different attack instead of all here, maybe down here. It, it's just going to cover a wide variety of things. But you first have to know the technique. Now that you've finished the DVD, you've gone through the first step of your training process. Work on this DVD. Practice it with us on your TV. Go through the repetitions as we go through it. Get to the point where you can do all of the techniques by yourself, your basic techniques by yourself, that you can do all of the partner techniques with a partner, and your partner can do them just as well with you. If you work with your partner well, if your goal is for your partner to learn how to do their techniques really well, and, and his goal is for you to learn, then you'll both meet your goal. So work well together. Help each other. Now, as, as you finish this, you'll, you'll be looking for things that you can do to add to that level of training. We will provide you with supplemental DVDs that will have like step two, three, four, onto the same technique. Uh, like if you're doing, um, okay, we're doing the tiger claw technique. Right now we've got the block, the strike, the knee. On the supplemental DV, we'll show you another follow-up after the knee. You may do the knee and the person may either stumble back, but be ready to come back and you have to follow up with something. We will show you that. You may do the knee strike and the person does 2,000 sit-ups every day and it bounces off his stomach. Well, okay, he does that, you step, now you got to have another kind of a follow-up. We will show you that. You may do a takedown, throw them down to the ground, they will land in a completely different situation, different position than you're used to. We will show you how to follow up on that. So the supplemental DVDs are a valuable tool to improve the abilities that you gain from that level one instructional DVD. And it's going to be good. All right, I want to hear from you. With all of that, I think you've got plenty to do. Good luck.